One of my students just asked me, what is a trial balance? So the purpose of this video is to answer that question. I will also answer the question, how do I create one? All a trial balance is, is a listing of every account that a company has in its respective balance as a debit or credit. You'll see that we title it, call it a trial balance, and we specify the period that it's for. Then we're going to take all the debits, add them up and get a total, all the credits, add them up and get a total, and then debits should equal the credits because all of our transactions up until now have had debits equaling credits, so they should stay in balance. So I'm going to list all the accounts and we'll give you a beginning trial balance just so you know what one looks like. For this example, I made up some numbers for our debits and credit balances. This is how much cash and receivables and inventory we had to start the period, how much we owed to our suppliers, and how much our investors contributed, and how much earnings they retained in the business. That's our starting point. So if this trial balance at the beginning of this 1231X1 period um, balances, debit should equal credits. If you add it up, you'll see that this on the left adds up to $15,000 in debit balances and $15,000 in credit balances. So at the end of this prior year, 1231X1, we'll just assume that's the starting point for the next year, um, was $15,000. Okay, so really, I, maybe I should just change this to be as of 1, 1, x1. Let's do that. So we're going to say we started 1, 1, x1 with these balances. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the expanded accounting equation. And really, what I want you to do, do is think about accounts as a bucket. So you have a cash bucket, a receivables bucket, and cash comes in and cash goes out. Receivables come in, they go out. For every one of these accounts, just imagine that they're a bucket. And we're going to talk about how we record the ins and outs for each of these buckets. So I'm going to draw the expanded accounting equation over here, and I'm going to draw a bucket for each one of these, and I'm going to put their bucket balance in there in a moment. Now the way the buckets work, I will finish the expanded accounting equation here, but let's start with assets. These buckets, we're going to kind of split into two pieces, the ins and the outside. So if you want to say you have more cash coming in, we're going to bring it in through the left-hand side. Okay, that's a debit. We call that a debit. Now, if you want to say that you got rid of some cash, you're going to have to record the entry on the right-hand side, cash coming out in receivables reducing because people paid you in inventory going out because maybe you gave it to customers. Okay, so those are the rules for assets. The reason assets are shown as coming in on the left is because assets are on the left-hand side of the balance sheet equation. So now we're going to do the right-hand side of the balance sheet equation. We're going to split the accounts payable bucket in half, but since liabilities on the right, we're going to bring, when we have more accounts payable, it comes in on the right, and as we pay off our accounts payable, it goes out on the left. So as you can see here, I've added the equity, so liabilities plus equity. Equity also is on the right, so we're going to draw this dissection. If you want to see you have more capital stock, you add on the right, and you take out on the left. Retained earnings, you add on the right, and you take out on the left. Okay? Now, we know retained earnings come from a couple different sources. Okay, and let's draw those in. So as you can see, I've expanded this equation. Equity, we had capital, stock, and retained earnings increasing on the right. Well, retained earnings are affected by a couple things. Net income minus dividends. So let's go ahead and show that then. So net income needs to be dissected, but we increase that on the right and we decrease it on the left. Sales revenue works the same way, increase in equity, increase on the right, decrease on the left, and rent revenue, increase on the right, decrease on the left. So if you have more revenue, record an entry on the right-hand side. Let's go to the expenses and over to the dividends account. Dividends. As you can see, if you have more dividends, it's actually going to reduce your retained earnings. So we actually are opposite. You increase dividends on the left and decrease on the right. Expenses. As you have more expenses, it will 
effectively wind up being a deduction to net income and a deduction to retained earnings. And you reduce expenses on the right. Okay, reduce and increase. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these balances. If it's a debit balance here, I'm going to put it as a debit left-hand side on the account. If it's a credit over here, right-hand balance, I'll put it on the right over here. So cash, we're starting with $5,000 in our bucket. Receivables, $3,000 in our bucket. And $7,000 of inventory in our bucket. Accounts payable, we begin the period owing $2,000 to our suppliers. Our capital stock, the, the amounts contributed by owners, $4,000. And retained earnings, all of our income retained so far, is $9,000. So all we're doing is we're kind of keeping track of the balances in their respective accounts. These are called general ledger accounts and we're going to keep track of those balances. Now what we'll do is we'll move into this next period, X1, and we'll buy and sell some things or we'll collect. We'll do a few things and we'll update these accounts. Let's start off by saying that this customer uh, actually paid, the, the customers who owed this, let's say one of the customers paid $1,000. If they paid us $1,000, we would receive cash of a thousand, so cash going up, and our receivables from that customer would go down. Assets remain the same because they went up by a thousand, went down by a thousand. Let's buy a couple thousand dollars of inventory from a supplier. Now once again, we should record these in a journal entry, but I'm going to post them right in the ledger directly just so you can see it. We received more inventory, so that would be a debit to inventory, left hand side, and we haven't paid yet, so we're going to increase that accounts payable account by two thousand dollars. And I should make that the same color. In this case our assets increased by two thousand, liabilities increased by two thousand, balance sheet equation remains in balance. Let's take some inventory and sell it to a customer for uh, four thousand dollars. If we sell it to a customer for four thousand, our receivables will go up four thousand. That means the customer will owe us four thousand and our sales revenue will go up by four thousand. So what you see here is equity increased by four thousand, assets increased by four thousand with the same. But we have to account for the cost of the goods that we sold. Let's say that four thousand dollars sale cost us in inventory uh, one thousand dollars. So we're going to give away a thousand dollars of inventory and record an expense called cost of goods sold of a thousand. So we have more of this expense called cost of goods sold because we gave away inventory. That was a reduction of assets and an increased expenses, but it reduces net income, reduces retained earnings, and reduces equity. So it's a down and a down of exactly $1,000. Okay, I think uh, that's good for now. What we're going to do now is then determine what is the balance in all these accounts. And once we know the balances, we'll put them into the new trial balance. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to wipe out this old trial balance we're going to change the date. We've now magically jumped to the end of the year as of, and now I'm going to say, for the year ended. Okay, because we're going to account for the whole year and all the transactions. Then what we need to do is we need to go to each account and say, how much cash do we have left? How much receivables do we have left? Go to each of these. If your lefts are bigger than your rights, then it'll be a left balance. If your rights are bigger than your left, then it's a right balance. Okay, so we're going to go and compute the balances in each of these accounts. Cash now has $6,000 in it. Accounts receivable now has $6,000 in it. Inventory now has 9 minus 1, $8,000 in it. And I double underline to show this is the total that's going to go on to the trial balance. Accounts payable now have $4,000 credit balance in it. Capital stock didn't change, so it has $4,000. Retained earnings we have not updated yet, so it has $9,000. Sales revenue has $4,000. No rent. Uh, cost of goods sold. It has $1,000 in it. Now, there are some of these accounts we didn't use, so they're going to be zeros over in the trial balance over here. So what we're going to do now is take these balances, put them on the trial balance, and we're hoping that they will match debits to credits. Okay, so I'm just putting in all these numbers. I'm going to wrap up with cost of goods sold, and uh, that's it. Okay, it looks like we didn't put in rent sales revenues here, 4000 
Okay, so sometimes I, I check these off. You know, I put that over there and I check them all off to make sure they made it over here. But if it's out of balance, that may be an, a sign that you didn't get everything. Okay, what we're going to do now is add it up. 12, 21. There you go, 21,000. And credits, 8, 17, 21. What we've just done is we've created a trial balance. You'll now be able to use this trial balance to prepare your income statement. So these accounts here would be used for your income statement. These accounts here are used for your statement of retained earnings. Let me draw that again with a different color. That's your statement of retained earnings. Now, be careful. All of this goes into here as well as your net income. Okay, so all of these lumped into a word called net income, a sum number, also goes on your statement of retained earnings. And then your balance sheet would be these guys, including the ending balance of retained earnings. So after retained earnings has been updated for the net income, minus dividends, that ending balance. So it's not going to be this 9,000, it'll be a, a different number. That's what will go on your balance sheet. Okay, so hopefully this, taking the time to work through this has helped you and uh, wish you all the best.